What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of NFT Alpha. It's your boy Taco here. Make sure to give us a follow at NFT Alpha Show on Twitter. If you aren't already, it would be much appreciated. Hey, while you're at it, give your boy a follow. Crypto underscore taco zero one, the one and only. All right, let's get right into it with don't use your NFT for that. If using an NFT doesn't improve gameplay, why bother? They call them collectibles for a reason. <laughs> Whether it's Louis Vuitton bags or Funko Pops, people like to accumulate stuff. The reasons for collecting are numerous. Some do it for pleasure. Some are riding seasonal trends. Others are seeking status or prestige or to show loyalty to their teams or favorite artists. In the crypto world, people collect board apes and crypto punks because of their high value and maybe because they look cool. But here's the thing, none of these NFT collectibles has an actual purpose or as we say in crypto, utility. The vast majority don't provide special access to anything or solve any real problems. Uh, I don't know who this article, who wrote this article, but they must be looking through like um, a pinhole or something because there's a lot out there. Web3 game builders need to stop trying to peddle NFTs as ill-defined solutions to ill-defined problems. Instead of trying to invent dubious technical use cases for NFTs, Web3 game studios that want to make sought-after non-fungible assets should focus on creating games, characters, and intellectual property that people love, and mint NFTs based on those instead. I used to play Diablo Lord of Destruction when I was a kid, and if NFTs were involved in that game, if crypto was somehow incorporated into that game, I'd be a millionaire right now because I would farm all day, all night. I had a bot going, he was uh, farming items for me. I'd wake up to my treasure chest of items in my stash. And let me know, uh, let me, uh, let me uh, add this. There was a website I used to use. It was a secondary website for buying and selling items within that game. And we had like gold coins on that website. So I sell an item, I uh, won five gold coins for it. Awesome, bing, bang, boom. Player to player transaction, great. Let's say I wanna sell an item. I could sell it on that website also. Boom, boom, we do the transaction, great. I have the item I want, the guy has the gold. He can go spend it on whatever he wants. Only thing that they didn't have was an off ramp. Like I couldn't turn that gold coins into uh, fiat or in today's day and age, crypto. I couldn't do that, but it existed. That technology existed way, way back in the day where items were sought after they were essentially non-fungible. I couldn't turn this item into 10 more of the same items. It was a unique piece that I wanted that I could buy and I could sell. NFTs enable the ownership, trading, and monetization of digital creations such as artwork, music, videos, and virtual real estate. I would like to add, in the future, it's going to be game items. It's gonna be this uh, sought after sword that you get at level 99 after beating the boss. It's gonna be that amulet that um, this random monster drops, and now you have that one amulet that a thousand other people want. It already exists. Don't focus on the tech, that gets in the way. Here's the thing, most players just aren't interested in new ways to use NFTs, unless they directly improve the gameplay experience or provide other value. This is the only thing anyone thinking about using an NFT in a game's build needs to think about. For example, 99% of Pudgy Penguin owners don't use them for anything. They just like collecting them. I would um, also push back at this. They just were able to claim some items, um, some IRL items, some physical versions of their Pudgy Penguins on Amazon. I, um, I would go ahead and say that that's a pretty big utility for the Pudgy Penguins. I don't, I don't like this article. I wanted to read it to you guys so you can get furious with me. In other words, your strategy here is brand building, not utility building. Of course, I mean, you want to build a, a brand before you have any utility associated with that brand because you're probably just going to be building it for a handful of people. That way, any kind of company looking to incorporate NFTs into what they build needs to think about what kind of digital assets are people interested in owning? Why and how can we create more of them? This article must have been written by a, uh, an intern at um, Blockworks who was told to just make an, uh, make an article about NFTs. And their, uh, their thought was, 
Don't use NFTs for that. Anyway, let's move on. I've had a few people reach out to me wanting me to cover their projects. So I got the projects from them and they were ordinals. They were on the Bitcoin network. So let me know in the comments if you guys are interested in learning more about ordinals. And uh, maybe I'm going to be covering some projects in the future. But um, this video, we're going to learn a little bit about ordinals. A beginner's guide to Bitcoin NFTs. Ordinal inscriptions, they're similar to NFTs, are digital assets inscribed on a Satoshi, a single Satoshi, the lowest domination of a Bitcoin. Inscribing on Satoshis, named after the pseudonymous creator of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto, is possible thanks to the Taproot upgrade launched in, on the Bitcoin network on November 14th, 2021. What is an ordinal inscription? Bitcoin developers have worked to bring NFTs to the number one blockchain for nearly a decade. The creators of the Rare Pepe NFT collection, uh, Counterparty, began in 2014, followed by Stacks in 2017. The inscription process writes or inscribes the data of the content stored into the witness of the Bitcoin transaction. The witness was introduced in the SegWit upgrade to the Bitcoin network in 2014. What the team came up with with ordinals is genius, says Alex Miller, CEO of Hyro, uh, a developer for layer two smart contract platform Stacks. It's super core to the Bitcoin ethos and they basic in that they basically took several different things and pieced them together in a way the original creators did not foresee or expect. The first step in the creation of ordinals is users downloading a whole Bitcoin network, which is the Bitcoin core, and syncing the node to the blockchain. After the sync is completed, the next step is to create an ordinals wallet and send some Satoshis to it. But how did we get to this point? Launched in 2017, Segregated Witness, or SegWit, fixed a host of bugs in Bitcoin Core, allowing more transactions per block and laid the groundwork for L2 payment channels like the Bitcoin Lightning Network. One thing people don't understand is that in order for Bitcoin to be secure, blocks must be full. That is part of the coin security model. If blocks are not full, then nobody has any reason to pay more than the minimum fee rate to have their transactions included in a block. So as a result, blocks must be full. Got to think, if you're inscribing data onto these Satoshis, it requires data. So the bigger the amount of data, the, the, the less that can be put into a single uh, Bitcoin block. All these people are trying to inscribe Satoshis. It's going to raise the price of the block or the transaction fee to uh, push your transaction through to the network, the Bitcoin network. Ordinals can be a complicated process due, due to the size of the Bitcoin blockchain, and the need to use the command line Windows or terminal Mac Linux. What's next for ordinals, you may ask? The race is on to, to develop more seamless methods of inscribing on Bitcoin and wallets that make it possible to view the Bitcoin NFT once it's created. You gotta think, there is 100 million Satoshis in one Bitcoin. So essentially, you can inscribe 100 million uh, inscriptions into a single Bitcoin. Looking to create a seamless way for collectors to create ordinal inscriptions, Gamma, a Bitcoin NFT marketplace on Stacks, began offering a paid service that allowed users to inscribe images and text. Other projects providing the service include Ordal Bots from the creators of the Satoshables NFT collection. Here is the official Gamma.io tweet. Hyro system announced Tuesday it is rolling out support for ordinals on its Hyro wallet. And on Wednesday, Xverse, a Bitcoin-based web wallet, also launched support for Bitcoin NFTs. So these, these wallet providers, they have to uh, distinguish every Satoshi from one another. So in order to distinguish which Satoshi has your ordinal on it, use one of these wallets. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard and you might send out your uh, inscribed uh, Bitcoin Satoshi by accident. You don't want to do that. All right, real quick, heading over into Crypto Slam. We had a few uh, major sales over the weekend. A Fidenza sold for $370,000. A Bored Ape sold for $168,000. A Bored Ape Kennel sold for $126,000. 
I wonder what's so special about this one. Uh, another Bored Ape sold for 126K. Another kennel for 122K. These are the biggest kennel sales I've seen in a long time. I wonder I wonder if uh, somebody knows something. Maybe something to keep an eye on. All right, going to the top collections over the last 24 hours. You got Bored Ape. You got Mythos. You got the guys Unchained. Uh, Mune Ape, Uncategorized Ordinals, Art Blocks, The Captains, and Kiwami Teens. Followed by so rare and Azuki. Uh, and let's see if anything in, is interesting on uh, CNFT calendar. Get me some Cardano NFTs. And I noticed this one. Tappy by Tap Tools. I've been using Tap Tools recently for uh, my Dejin Cardano trading. So it looks like it is minting on the 17th in five days. There's your warning. They have 21,000 people on Twitter. Supply is going to be 5,555 and the mint price is to be determined. So let's go to their website and I'll show you guys um, what is Tap Tools. It is very similar to Dex Tools or Dex Screener which is um, pretty much Ethereum's DEX. Decentralized exchange where they show all of the top projects, the ones that popped up overnight, the ones with the highest volume. There's the volume. You see Snake. Snake has had the highest volume or one of the highest volumes over the last like three, four weeks. So it looks like it's going to be maybe a utility for the website. Let's let's uh, let's see if I can learn more from their Twitter. All right, it looks like they're gonna be penguins. Tappy tools, tappy by tap tools in five days. I really can't find too much information about what these are for. I mean, they're, they're showing how long until they mint, but I'm not really getting any info on what the purpose of these NFTs are gonna be. I mean, it only says they're going to be a unique penguin living on uh, the Cardano blockchain. I'm going to go ahead and say that there is going to be some kind of utility with these. I would definitely jump into their Discord, ask some questions, get a sense of the community, maybe uh, explore on uh, Tap Tools a little bit, see if you uh, enjoy using their website. Uh, there you go, right there, Tappy. Uh, Tappy is minting five days, two hours and 30 minutes. Yeah, I would I would maybe reach out and be like, hey, what are these for? And uh, let me know the answer in the description. Maybe I'm gonna mint one. But uh, that is all I got, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you watching as always. Uh, stay blessed, be safe, wear your seatbelt, keep it under 100. And that's all I got. Be blessed, talk about.